The viewpoints expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPTT's management or owners. What's rock and roll about anyhow, huh? Is it some tattooed bimbo with a voice like an electric lawnmower? Or Michael Jackson moonwalking for the boys at Pepsi? Hey gang, I'll tell you, it's both of those things and everything in between, all right? We've got some people who think rock should be labeled and censored, as well as people like Neil Young, who think rock and roll is sold out, it's sold to the corporate government. Tonight we're gonna listen to Neil, all right? On a video that won't be shown on MTV, and see if we can find out who's rocking and who's rocking the boat. But as for me, I still like that old time rock and roll. Listen. You ready for me? Let's go. Straighten it out. Here we go. At home base today, Jennifer Norwood, Parents Music Resource Center. <laughs> Sally Cato. Sally Cato, who's the lead singer of Smash Gladys. She's with us tonight. And uh, Bart Lewis. Bar Lewis, a member of Smash Gladys is with us tonight. At, at uh, Loudmouth number one, we have Charles Young, music critic for Playboy. And, and Ara J. Smith from the Village Voice. All right, let me, let me start with, let's fairly start with Jennifer, all right? Very nice lady here been on the show with us before. You represent the Parents Music Resource Center in Washington. Tell us quickly, what is it and what do you advocate? Well, first of all, what you said in the opening about us wanting censorship is not correct. We are an organization that was formed in 1985 because we saw that there were some themes in rock music that were promoting rape, suicide, violence, murder, and we felt that parents... <laughs> We felt that parents needed to be aware. Now, I don't think it's the government's right to legislate. I don't think anyone should do the parenting but the parents. But just like parents can't go to a movie and know what's in it before they see it, that's why they have ratings on movies. That's why we thought the recording industry could help out by putting information on albums that would let parents know what was there before they bought it or before they let their child buy it. You don't think for a second now that by putting labels or something on that you're not encouraging people to buy? I know if I were... 12 years old and I walked down and I saw a label that said uh, not for tender young ears because it talks about getting laid you know, I'm gonna buy it I'm gonna buy it I'm gonna buy that I want to know about that well, the purpose of labels is not to encourage and it's not to discourage it's simply to inform I don't think that that we should set the standard I don't think the PMRC to be out there telling people what is right or wrong. I think everyone has to make their own judgment for themselves. But I think that they need to do Let it go to based on accurate Charles. information. Charles, you, uh, Charles, you told one of our producers. You told Charlie. Charles told. Zip it a second. Charles told one of our producers that when the PMRC says that they're not for censorship, they're lying. Is she lying? is lying. Uh, if you read the PMRC newsletter, 
you read, if you read Tipper Gore's book, she states very clearly that she wants the Federal Communications Commission to shut down radio stations and television stations that play music that she deems offensive. Um, that, is the, uh, that is the definition of censorship, which is government restricting free expression. She want, uh, the the uh, PMRC brags in their newsletter about their close relationship with the Federal Communications Commission. These, uh, the same Federal Communications Commission that is right now full of wackos and fundamentalists and cranks. We're, we're trying to knock Howard Stern off the air in New York City. They're trying to shut down a college radio station. They're trying to shut down a Pacifica radio, sta radio station. The PMRC fully endorses that. That is censorship. That is, is that right? Do Every you? time they said they are not in favor of censorship, they've been lying. Do you really? We have are you in favor of that? Are you in favor of the FCC closing down a station? Um, Page 162 of this I'm book. I'm in favor of hearing. of parents writing to the FCC when they find something that they don't feel is appropriate. I don't think it's the PMRC's position to write to the FCC. I think you don't it's the think there's any time in a day period? You FCC. don't think there's any... And it's not what the PMRC deems offensive. It's what everyone, every individual thinks is offensive so then, to him or So her. then, in other words, if one person doesn't think it's offensive, thinks it's okay, then you'd be in favor of that station staying open so that that one person at least got satisfied to it, right? I think the decision Am I right? yes with no. the FCC. Yeah, in other words, you want to stick more power in the hands of the FCC. The decision... No, 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 no. The decision belongs with the people, not the FCC. Founded PMRC. What was what was her name? Uh, Tipper Gore, Mrs. Lloyd Benson, who is running for vice president. You just president. mentioned you just mentioned the guy who was running for president's wife, and the guy who's running for vice president's wife, right? Uh, Two frustrated old biddies in Washington D.C. who haven't been getting anything. All right. Hey, we don't want we don't want a lobbying group inside the White House. Two frustrated old biddies whose husbands have been out there looking for the presidency and the vice presidency. That is should have campaigned with Gary Hart. They could have gotten what they were looking Mort for. Mort, they're in both parties. Rock and roll family. You're getting so upset about something. Now, let me tell you what I'm upset about. I'm upset about a study that came out of Rhode Island earlier this year from the Rape Crisis Center that found that... Let's hear, let's hear what she has to say. ...that found that a majority of 6th to ninth graders polled felt that it was acceptable for a man to rape a woman. Now the the people who conducted the study, when they were asked when they were asked why are these kids walking away, walking around feeling that it's okay, they said sexual violence in the media, in the music, and on television, and in the movies. It's part of a bigger picture. I think we need to speak out about it. Statistics show that three and four three and four children will be sexually assaulted by the time they reach the age 18. I think we need to be upset about it. I think we need to be upset about the fact that right now, the number one album in the country is an album that depicts the rape scene on the cover. I don't think this stuff needs to be censored, right. but I think, I think we need to be upset. I think it's every individual's right to be upset, and I think it's the rock musicians who are singing the good music that should be the most upset because everyone else is messing it up for All them. Right, let me hear, let me let me see something. Hold on just a second, because I want to go, I want to go to Still Store here a second. I want to see a cover of Smash Gladys. All right, I think that's is that. Uh, incidentally, there's Smash Gladys. All right, right there. All right, I want to see a cover of the rape scene that we're talking about on this other album. All right, let's see the let's see the rape scene. Did we see that? Guns and Roses. All right, did you see the rape scene? How the hell has she determined that was rape? that she just w didn't run into that mechanical man and get cut up. You have determined that it was rape. You have a vivid imagination. Do you think some nine-year-old nine kid is going to think that was rape? And you would think, you would think someone just like happened to drop their underwear to their knees by accident? Maybe she was going to the bathroom. What do I know? And the lyrics... You know what we're doing? We're, we're, we're saying that Washington housewives are deciding what's good and what's not good for. Um, public opinion polls have showed that a majority of parents, 75 percent, want warning labels, 80 percent want printed their... Let's they want them because they're too lazy to discipline their own kids. No. They want them because they don't take the time to go in and listen to those albums that little Johnny buys, all right? They want the government to raise their children. That's wrong. 
you think every parent, you think every parent should take the time to go see a movie before they you're take their child? You're damn right they should. And what about if those you're parents? taking care of your kids, yes. What about if the those movie parents is, that if are the movie is rated R, long, sweetheart, what about and you and your little twelve-year-old kids go into it, and you let your twelve-year-old kid go to it, you ought to have the kid taken away from you because you're a lousy parent. We're going to be back in just a second to go to the rest of our guests. I don't know if we've got the music up. I want to hear a little bit of, uh, I want to hear a little bit of smashed uh, Gladys, all right? I want to go to Sally Cato. All right. Sally Cato is the lead singer for Smash Gladys. Some of your songs, Sally, are uh, titled, give me some of the titles, all right? Hard to Swallow. Lick it into shape, yeah. all right, and legs up. Now, I somehow don't think that's about dead cockroaches, all right? Do you think your music is appropriate for, let's say, 10-year-olds? Um, yes, definitely. How about your lyrics? Yes. 100%. What are those lyrics going to tell a 10-year-old? Um, depending on the song, they're going to tell a 10-year-old the truth, which is something... <laughs> Which is and something telling that a people old, don't tell And you. telling a 10-year-old the truth, are you telling them also of the pitfalls of irresponsible sex, the pitfalls right. of, of recreational right. drugs, yep. the pitfalls of sticking a gun in your mouth and yep. pulling the trigger? That's right. Are you? And you don't have to do it by pointing your finger and waving a Bible that you've never read. You can do it the way we do it. You know, I think it's... I think it's important, too, sometimes to remember that that gun that you stick in your mouth could be a... But it could be just as loaded and deadly nowadays. Right? I agree. Just as loaded and deadly nowadays. I want to tell you about a group. We had a group that was going to be on with us tonight. We brought them in, put them up at the Hilton Hotel. They were, we were informed that they were boisterous, loud. They didn't want them there. They were booted out. They instantly, at that moment, went to work to get them new rooms at the Red Roof Inn. They went to the Red Roof Inn. And may I see on the prompter, please, the results of their stay at the Red Roof Inn. And this is a group, all right, let me see it. All right, we've had to block out, we've had to block out bottom word there, which uh, you know it's obviously the F word. We blocked out the swastikas. Let me see what else you got in there. Obviously some guys who really had some problems with themselves. Uh, their name was G.G. Allen. And they're in jail right now, so they can't be with us, all right? That's the kind of thing that no one in the rock and roll business who has any responsibility digs. We don't like that, all right? We don't like that. There are perfectly adequate laws against doing that sort of thing. Damn right, they're going to find their ass roasted in jail. Suicide, yeah. child molesting. So let's enforce those laws and let people say what they want to say. Here's a gentleman right here who G.G. Allen threatens your life, am I correct? Pretty much. Pretty Why? Much. Well... I wrote some stuff about him, and, uh... Hell, if that were, uh, if that were prerequisite to kill critics, I would have killed about 12 of them already. Uh, <laughs> let me say this about G.D. G.D.'s a drug-taken, sidewalk-walking guy. I didn't know he's... He writes about it. He talks... Uh, he says in interviews he does. Is it true? <laughs> is it true that this guy's form of entertainment... Pardon me, folks. Ladies at home, if you've got kids, uh, you know, that you don't want to watch this stuff, it's up to you. Take some. Yeah, he had. He had. Right. I had to duck fast. How's that for entertainment? That's entertainment. Oh. Boy. Not, there's, hey, there's wait, wait, wait. Let me say something more about Gigi. Right, let, let, let me say something. Gigi, there's two issues here. First of all, the guy... Is willing to go to jail. I think he's probably having a good time in jail right now. Uh, the guy is the guy is very honest. He's, he doesn't run when the cops come for him. I don't know why he does some of the stuff he does, but he pays the price. Now, there's a First Amendment issue here when you're talking about Gigi's records. 
and and if you're going to have freedom of speech for some artists, you've got to have it for all artists. And you can't say, well, we're going to take GG out, but we'll uh, let Prince or Springsteen in. You've got you to give the First Amendment to GG, too. I agree with that. I think there's a we lot of good musicians, agree with that. Let me tell you. a lot of bad musicians, yeah. and it's up to the parents and the children together uh, let, let to weed it out. Let me tell you something, Jennifer. Let you can put words in my mouth all you want, but I'm telling you what I've told right you now. since I started with this job. In Florida, there's and a record store that a teenager working at the record store was arrested for selling a record. With a child. It's like a guy. Wait a second. What was this? Wait a second, Jennifer. I want to hear about why your freedom of speech is going... I want to hear about Check it out. the guy Check it who out. was arrested for selling a record. Somebody's selling a dance record that somebody in Florida found offensive. So do they even go to the record store? Do they go to the artist? They arrest a teenager who worked behind the counter. I mean, we've got death threats against Ozzy Osbourne in Texas. We've got, we've got honest to God record burnings in Minnesota. And let me tell you about one thing that really is, is the most amazing story here. There's a guy named Jello Biafra, singer for the Dead Kennedys. Now, I don't care what you think of Jello Biafra's music. That's, that's irrelevant. But the fact is, Jello Biafra put a political album out called Frankenplace. After the album came out, nine cops knocked down the door, six, six uh, plain clothes, three in, in uniform. They searched his apartment for two hours, and they, they charged him for distributing obscenity or something. I mean, he spent thousands of dollars fighting this. He's, his band folded because of this. His record label is, went into debt because of this. And it's because of the climate, the PMRC, which endorsed this bust of Della Biafra. No, it's, it's, yes, you did, Jennifer. Where? I, I'll, read you a, I'll read you a statement from the PMRC. Yeah. You wouldn't want someone standing up in the middle of the studio and yelling fire, and that is not protected under the First Amendment. Jennifer, the law, the, the courts have decided that obscenity is not protected All under right, the First Amendment said, either. All right, but you said, you said you, you said you hadn't supported. Jennifer, you said you hadn't supported the problem with Jello we Biafra. Didn't now didn't we're going to hear what you did. We didn't litigation. The parent, this is a statement from the PMRC after Jello's charge. After the, the, the searching of his apartment, the Parents Music Resource Center feels that the poster and the Dead Kennedys album Frankenchrist is a blatant example of pornography and failure to provide truth and packaging. For that, we bust people. The warning that sticker, which was placed line. on the shrink wrap, not on the album itself, uh, claims that the poster is there's a poster in the record, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're endorsing it. You're that that, that didn't really sound like an endorsement. And you set the that didn't so sound like an endorsement. You know what we're missing? We're missing the content. We're not even discussing what this material is. We're not discussing why people feel it necessary to sell violence, to sell suicide, to sell rape, to sell penises Have and Have you been watching to television brothers. for the last What's 40 that? years? Oh. Have you been watching television for the well, last 40 years? We're speaking out about it, you know? We're speaking out about it. These we're people started a revolution in the 60s, and they don't want their kids to do the same thing. They're smart. You people started a revolution once. And you know if you educate your kids, if you let them listen to the radio, they're going to do it again. And you don't want that to happen. I you think can dish it out. Your generation... Oh. I think there's a lot of paranoia and a lot of misplaced anger here. I grew up with rock and roll music. I went to Alice Cooper concerts at the age of nine. Sex is not a dirty word. We're saying people need to be tuned in. And if the, if the people who are ready... I sang about ready, the same thing, but you were listening to it. If the What's people the who are now? ready to raise their children Man. and ready to communicate with their children based on the lyrics and know what their children are experiencing... Then let the then parents communicate with their children. No Don't you communicate them. and pretend to take the role of leading children. Let the parents do it. Rock and roll. Is it selling out? We'll find out. Let me, let me introduce you to some more folks, all right? Rick Derringer is uh, lead guitarist for uh, Super Guy. He's with us, and uh, of course, Charles remains at uh, Loudmouth Number 2. 
We are joined by uh, Jay Coleman. Jay, how you doing, pal? And, of course, the folks didn't give me any questions to ask you, so I'll think of a question myself. You've been listening to what we've been talking about. You in the business for a long time. Are there certain lyrics that really bother you? Yeah, some. But have you found, indeed, That's if you personal, listen though. to the music, it is personal, right? Right. If you listen to the music of the creative generation, which I always refer to as that generation between the ages of 16 and 28, if you listen to the creative generation, indeed are they not foretelling what is going to go on in a few years, in many instances? I don't know. You don't no, think so? No, um, Rick, sorry. you've been no, around no, the no, business a long no, time, This pal. is the way I see it. Um, I've made records. My first record was called Hang On Sloopy, and supposedly... How great. Yeah. But the point is, supposedly there was a suggestive lyric in that, and it said, Sloopy, let your hair hang down on me. Now, as a 17-year-old, I said, I don't know what's suggestive about this. No, I didn't either. But, uh, but if, if censorship is allowed to continue this way, it will get to the point where a simple thing like that can be censored. Or another lyric in one of my songs was called, Come on, little, I'm going to do it to you. Now, I'm certain that's really suggestive, but I don't think it should be censored. You had a song that you wrote called Pipeline, and it was an instrumental. It could be censored because of the title being suggestive, and I think we just have to stop censorship and thinking about it. You got, uh, I remember when... I remember in, in my rock and roll period, there was a song by Shirley Ellis called The Nitty Gritty. Yep. Remember that? Yes. I mean, everyone knew uh, in, that the black community, nitty gritty meant this, all right? Now, we all used to laugh because we knew those square heads at the FCC who were so busy, you know, drinking their corn pone and screwing someone else's wife would never get around yeah. to listening to the lyric. Yeah. I don't think that lyric, all right, turned around and turned anyone into a murderer, a rapist. It's that it's everyone's interpretation, and that's why the way, the proposal we have... All right, but why right. should we have to live with your interpretation? But we don't, because we have asked that they print the lyrics on the outside of record jackets and let like you make up... So a you are now and in the same forcing, way, you are forcing no, record companies to use an entire sheet of their side. Putting it on. It's voluntary. Let and me, just in the same way that that warning label on that, your cigarette that pack means doesn't nothing. prevent you from smoking that, that cigarette, really means the warning label on a record album will not prevent anyone from buying it. Martin, That's information. I had it on, on my song. The reason I said, come on, little I'll do it to you, was because that was not the lyric on the record, and that was not the lyric on the record sheet. I had a lyric sheet inside my album called All American Boy, and on the song Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, I say, come on, little closer, going to do it to you. It's written on the lyrics. Come on a little closer, gonna do it to you. And the audience took it upon themselves to rewrite my song into a sexier version than I envisioned, and I sing it that way ever since, because that's the way they want to hear it. Jay. Jay, rock and roll used to be the battle cry of everything upstanding, radical, political. And when the Beatles sang Revolution, they meant in the streets. Right? and uh, not to advertise some fancy aerobic footwear. Has corporate America squashed the guts out of rock and roll? I don't think corporate America has done that at all. I think it's, it's the artist's prerogative. If they want to sell their lyrics and their songs and appear in commercials, they have the right to do that. Wait, wait a second. You say the artist's prerogative. Rick and I both know that we probably have our songs when we didn't have our own publishing companies with publishers. It was the publisher's prerogative, not he and I as artists. I think that was the Beatles' problem recently, isn't it? It's just... Well, they, they would rather not have happened, but in the, in the end, I, they I know what my producers are aiming here. What my producers are aiming at is that the rock and rollers, uh, just like I felt, maybe uh, the rock and rollers we of the '60s are the sellout artists of the '80s. But indeed, it's not us so much uh, the writers as it is the publishers. Well, to a certain extent, that's true. The artists don't have control over their publishing. They may have sold it off 10, 15 years ago. In the case of the Beatles. Of course, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a different story, but um, if you're talking about the Nike situation, that was a complicated one. The record company sold the rights to the, uh, to the footwear company, and then, of course, um, the publishing was acquired, which they purchased from uh, Michael, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Correct. Which Michael Jackson paid a pretty penny for, I believe, 43 million bucks. You're right on the When money. he bought it, all right? Yep. So he should be entitled to do what he wants to do with it. Yeah, go ahead, John. Well, the point is that most rock artists um, 
want to be taken seriously as artists, or they wouldn't be, get so angry when uh, critics like myself give them a negative review. And if a, if a rock star sells me his record uh, one month, and the next month he turns it around to, and sells it to Coca-Cola as a jingle, uh, as Robert Plant just did, um, the point is that he's, uh, 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 he, is, um, he, is sold, he is sold out, he has sold out his artistic integrity. And uh, yeah, if, he, if he wants to be taken, if he wants to be taken seriously as an artist, he should not be a shill. I'm going to take him as seriously as I would Ed McMahon selling denture paste on uh, TV. Well, look it's at Stevie Winwood. Artists are supposed to tell a truth like a newscaster is, and they shouldn't be taking money for their opinion. Let me tell you something. You're right. All right. Well, let me tell you something. I think we ought to tell you. turn that monitor around. All right. I want our studio audience to see this. This is something that hasn't been shown on MTV because the giant corporations have put the squash on it. This is Neil Young's new cut for MTV. Take a look at it, will you please? Let me see that. Shoot it up there. Move out of the way so I can see this. Peter. I think Neil, Rick, I, I think Neil kinds of calls it, all right? Uh, I, I can tell you, you know, being in the business I'm in, I get all kinds of offers. Uh, I, was offered, I get offers all the time. I was offered to do a cereal, all right? They wanted me to do a cereal, and they were going to change the name of a particular cereal to Loudmouth Cereal. And big bucks, baby. Yeah. Big bucks. 1.8 cents a package, and they sell billions of the damn But you have thing. to protect the integrity of your influence. It. I couldn't right? do it, man. I'm not going to tell someone to buy this crap that I wouldn't eat. All right, it's garbage. I think that's where the line should be drawn. And I repeat, I repeat, give me a product I like. Give me a I product think, I like, I'll promote the hell out of it and take every buck I can. I think right? that's what we're talking about here. When censorship gets uh, created almost by corporations, when that happens and when it's causing censorship, then that's where the artist himself has to protect his own influence. Uh, he has a responsibility to his influence. And uh, uh, censorship getting in the way of uh, music, or a message like this is, is just stupid. It's just, and this is censorship. That that you're protecting an artist's right, say the Beastie Boys, to sell crack in their. I'm, I'm protecting. But you're not. I'm not protecting everybody's to right to be strong and make up their own mind. Is and what I know, I'm protecting. It's common sense. It's Where do you common get your sense. information? Do you actually hang out on Avenue A on the Lower East Side? What, what information? I I think you know what you're talking about. I'd be happy to talk to you. Somebody. When people, let me just say one thing. When people call the PMRC, okay, and say they want to know what's, tell me about this band, the Beastie Boys, I don't send them a bunch of junk. I send them their lyric sheets. That's all it takes to make a decision is the lyric. We say, this is what the Beasties sing about. If they're right for you, go ahead. If not, make that decision. It's up to them. It's not up to me. And as long as it doesn't have a, a radio, Charles, that's what do they say? reiterate they want the fcc to shut down these radio stations that play the beastie boys music tipper gore has said it in a r this wretched book I whose title shall not pass my lips on national course. television and it says it in your newsletter it's so, a couple of presidential candidates wives who need platforms to make their husbands look good it's and that's all presidential yeah. Yeah. Except, look at tipper gore i mean we had look at albert gore we had albert gore right we had the youngest candidate running for president candidate was in Vietnam, and this guy sounded like the oldest man in the race, and it's because of his wife. I mean, this guy could have come off as the rock and roll candidate, so and, uh, no, no, we censored. don't want to censor her. No one voted for him. We don't want to censor her. We already censored her husband by not voting for him. It's not just political candidates. It's the medical community. It's the educational community. And I definitely and trust the medical community. Our community, our community, Jennifer, that you ought to remember, 70% of the hysterectomies performed on women don't need to be performed, all right? But they get up there and take it out. How do you right? feel about the pediatricians? How do you feel about the United States Church in general and the American Academy?
Academy of Pediatricians. How do I feel about what? The United States Surgeon General and the American Academy of Pediatricians. I think the United States Surgeon General is so happy he can wear a uniform that he's out of his mind. And I hope the hell he's out of there as Surgeon General pretty soon. We'll be back in just a second. Stay with us. come back to Sally Cato a second. Sally, obviously you haven't sold out, all right? I, of course, I don't know if anyone's offering to buy, but uh, would you say if Pepsi offered you five million bucks to endorse their product, you'd do it? Well, this, the last song on this album kind of explains that. It's called Sermonette. It was actually dedicated to that kind of thing and people like Jimmy Swagger. And it's not for the cash. Do you not like for Pepsi? the fame. You like Pepsi? It's all right. So yeah, would you, you know what? So for five million bucks, sure. would you do it? At this point in my career? Yeah. Why? Why not, baby? I mean, if you like the drink. Look I at mean, your t-shirt. Yeah. Is that Pepsi material? Huh? It's Pepsi yeah. to get behind this. Let me see. Look at this. I'm sure, right? Whoa. Whoa. Zero. Sorry, I looked. So you'd, uh, you wouldn't take the five million, right? I gotta tell you, I like Pepsi, Rick. I, I take, I'd take the, five the five million. million. I take it. That's the I way I see it. I, I think every artist. Charles, how about yeah. you? Yeah, you're saying by doing that that your opinions are for sale. I mean, how can you come back on your show? My opinion is for sale. Mine too. No, no, I don't, I don't make any bones about that. Wait a second, Sally. My no bones about that, sale. Charles. My opinion is for sale as long as it's my opinion. If someone tries to say, say this, and it's their opinion, not mine, then no. Yeah, but how do we know if you're taking five million dollars? I mean, if I'm a member of Congress and I vote yes on a bill and just happen to take five million dollars from, uh, you know, yeah, but from I'm not elected by the people. Charles. Yeah, but wait a minute. The, the issue here isn't really taking money. The, the issue is supporting an act. I mean, taking money, but uh, uh, to be able to develop a talent, it's, it's virtually impossible in today's market. It costs so much money to produce an artist and put him on the road. As long as it doesn't destroy the artist's belief or artistic integrity in what he's doing. There's nothing wrong with sponsorship. I don't. I wouldn't imagine a, a band uh, uh, that that appeals from nine to nineteen going out and getting a beer endorsement, but to get a candy bar endorsement or to get a soft drink endorsement, I think is perfectly acceptable in order to be able to market the band so that people can hear new music. There's no other way. The costs involved in production are entirely too expensive. I had a guy, I Sally, with Charles. No I agree with Charles to a degree in, in this sense. I had a guy come to me just about a week ago. Had uh, some nine hundred number deal. All right, Mort, if you'll record four messages. We put them on the 900 number deal, they call you, all right? And the longer you can keep them on switching over to other things, you make more money. No way I'm going to do that, all right? That is nothing no. but a rip-off. That, that's a rip-off. Well, that's right. a rip-off. I, that, that's 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 I think that applies, I think that principle applies whether you're promoting drunk food or athletic shoes or whatever. And, uh, you know, the point is that, you know, if you're a rock star and you're taking that kind of money to, to sell your art form, you're proving to the world that you're the same kind of cynical sleazeball at Jennifer that's Norwood and the PMRC. Wait a minute, that's, 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 that's not true. That's absolutely not true. And incidentally, the, and incidentally Tony, Tony, explain uh, what you do. Okay, I'm a record producer. I found bands like the Talking Heads, the Ramones, Bon Jovi, is my namesake. Yeah. A new band, French Lick from French, French Lick, Indiana, new band, okay? In order to promote a band, and I'm one of the few people in the industry yet who does it, it takes at least a minimum of $150,000 to $200,000 to get them to a position where they're ready to record. I don't see anything wrong in endorsing a pair of jeans or a candy bar if it's going to help the country or help the artist to introduce if them. If they really use if the product. If they really use the product, yes. If it, like doesn't, it. if it doesn't interfere with the integrity of the artist or take away our But like Charles things. says, if you're taking five million bucks, how is the public supposed to know you really like the product and didn't just switch to it? I don't believe for a minute that Robert Plant really likes Coca-Cola that much. Uh, I don't know. I've worked with him in a studio. I've seen him drink plenty of Coca-Cola. So, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anybody in his arm to drink it. I mean, Robert Plant's worked there, and I've seen him drink plenty of Coke Rick. and Pepsi and soft drinks. All right, let me, let me go to Rick. Rick plays 
Rick plays guitar for a lot of Budweiser commercials. Do you have a problem with artists endorsing any products, even one they well, don't use? Yeah, well, the, well my, my particular thing is I've been uh, unlucky enough not to have had the personal influence to be asked to use my name and face. Uh, I play on Budweiser, I play on Michelob, I play on most of the beer, different beer commercials, but it's always in the position of a musician where I'm not asked to use so my personal name or influence. And I think that's really the bottom line. A guy has his own integrity and the power of his influence to be responsible for. And uh, he always has to watch out what he is endorsing. I see nothing wrong with taking money because we are, that's part of being an American is working for money. I see nothing wrong with taking money and using your influence for something that's good and you believe in. All right, let me go to Jay then. Jay, you think that uh, anybody who criticizes corporate sponsorship is a sanctimonious, holier-than-thou do-gooder. But let's face it, pal. Whitney Houston, all right, doesn't need to pay her rent by drinking Diet Coke. Isn't she just copping out and getting greedy? I don't think she's copping out. I mean, let's face it. Wait a second. The record business is a business. People are in this prime. Most of these artists are in there not to make statements, but they're in there to make a lot of money. Okay? And the fact of the matter is, is that she was very marketable, and they, are, they and made her a great deal. And it's her integrity we're talking about here right now, too. I have to say, it amuses me to see these people talking about artist integrity and defending artist integrity, and yet they don't... Part of their about integrity Ross, is their creativity. Women up on meat racks. I mean, why can't we really speak out about that when we're talking about artist integrity? I mean, they're selling a message just like everyone else. And I think their integrity is at stake when they do that. So why can't we all speak out about it without being? We are. We are, but we're not you know, talking about censoring it. I like the music, but the lyrics haven't been too good. Maybe the audience can sing a different tune for us. You know, we always end up going to our audience because sure as hell, they always have the answer. We've heard, we've heard Jennifer tell us how the people call in. Jennifer, I can tell you, this audience isn't selected like you probably select your people when you're doing a survey. This audience writes in for their the tickets. Survey. This audience writes in for their tickets. We don't know where they stand on anything. It is a broad section from Waterbury, Connecticut to Let's go to your let's go to the audience to see if they have any questions or comments that you have. Go, gang. All right, I'd like to just say this that uh, I'm from a local band from Jersey called Juxtapose. Both of us here, uh, we're both songwriters, and I'd like to the point that's missed here is that uh, lyric writing is an art form, you know, and I can't be doing my art thinking that I'm going to you know be censored, you know, I can't think about it as an artist. I mean, I if it's lousy art, no one's going to buy it anyhow. It just comes, right, right, you know, right, right. art Nobody just comes. Mad record. Art just comes, and I don't think the American people are going to stand for that. Because I know I'm not. Okay? I don't know, I don't know how, how Jennifer could blame, like, like Ozzy, for that kid killed himself. Ozzy never pulled no trigger on no one. He did it to himself. That's right, he's talking about solution. He's talking about solution. He's not saying kill yourself, he's giving you a solution for it. He didn't say kill himself. If, if some kid, if some kid's gonna kill himself, if some kid's gonna kill himself, he's not doing it for the music. Maybe it's because really his parents are treating him with all that kind of right, stuff. Right. So what, they're gonna just take the scapegoat and go the easy way? And say that's the music? whether a suicide was caused by music, nor should you. I mean, you just can't find that determination. But whether the music is a symptom or a cause, if parents knew about the music, if they were aware of the lyrics, if you've got a child walking around quoting suicide lyrics, obviously that's something to be concerned about, and the parent can try and talk to them and find out what's bothering them. The music is a tool for communication. It doesn't so what we should do, what we should do then is what she says. And if we follow what she says, we should ban lyrics to talk about it. Guns that could do it, knives that could do it, razor blades that could do it, pills that could do it, windows, stop windows because you can jump out those, cars, all right? Let's get rid of the whole well, damn thing, all right? I think more lethal than a phonograph record that can kill. I agree. 
agree. Yeah, I agree. check it out, Mort. I mean, son of Sam. Son of Sam. It's just such a stupid argument. Let me hear. It's, it's such a stupid argument. A logical conclusion is, look, son of Sam said he got his messages from his dog. So I think we should outlaw all dogs. I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I got a message from a pig once and... Uh... Oh, yeah. All right, I have one thing to say. Like, 17 years ago, I started listening to rock and roll. It wasn't censored then, and I don't think it should be censored now. And people like you going out and making decisions for other people, yeah. only place you can go... Right, right here. We'll be back with the audience in one minute. Stay with us. Before we go back to us, before we go back to our studio audience, Rick, of course, I'm sure you know, is the producer of Weird Al Yankovic. Just uh, that album just went platinum, am I right? Yeah, I just heard that it's uh, just gone platinum and uh, still doing great. Who's fat? Still doing great. And Jennifer just said, "Can I tell everyone what I'm promoting?" Go ahead, Jennifer. What are you promoting? Just good parenting. I mean, parents help your kids distinguish between well, the good and bad. Nothing. No, no. Nothing wrong with good parenting right decision, as long as you know? the parents do it themselves. And well, don't get told how to do it, yeah. right? I'm not going to tell anyone how to do it. We right. say that the PMRC doesn't promote, doesn't advocate censorship, right? You say there should be certain guidelines set, certain criteria. But who are to set the criteria? You? The recording I've been in your has, world. I'm college educated, but I come from the city. I come from the streets, okay? No records ever made me want to talk like that. Okay. Have you ever written a subway? Yes. <laughs> now? I am a parent. I am a parent of a four-year-old. And I do listen to a lot of different types of music. And I don't think I'm a murderer, nor a killer, or, or I would go hang myself. Or a child I, abuser. Or, or a yeah. child abuser. Or a drug I love user. I, no, never. No, no. I love, I, I like love like too much, okay? Number two, you said something about having labels on side the records. We all know what's on the records. That's why we listen to them on the radio. That's why we go buy the product. Why do you have to have yeah. things on radio? On the, Best on the point record. I've heard. Like what we buy. Best point I've heard. We all know the records and we're going to go buy them. But they still stop it and they stop it at radio. Our, they, our record has been out. It's called social intercourse. There are people in this country who've been told that intercourse is a, a swear word. We're called porn rock. They won't play us on the radio. They're not going to let you find out about, about it, man. People live in Intercourse, Pennsylvania. What do they think about the name of the town? What's wrong with the name? What? What's wrong? Just the word. Inter she's a social intercourse, and they have a problem with that, with that name. What about the people who live in Intercourse, Pennsylvania? What about the people who live in French Lick, Indiana? What's wrong with that name? That one time I got a call from a radio station, and when they were asking me what I was doing, you know, and I said, I have a new group called French Lick, what do you think of that name? And they said, well, we don't think that's keeping with the true Christian tradition. I said, well, it happens to be a town, and the people in that town are very proud of their town. The recording industry decides what gets labeled. We don't. The artist. The people decide what gets labeled. The people are the people, the kids yes, who are writing the song. That's right. The record industry is an outlet for their creative freedom. So money's the bottom line? Talking about artists and technology. We give, we give Used to be a time, let me tell you, buy. Tony, you just brought up a good point. Used to be a time when I started rock and roll, Rick. When we started 20, 25 years ago. When you could go into a garage and produce a record right. for 50 or 100 bucks, all right? When you'd have yourself 500 of them printed up, you'd walk around the station, you'd get things done. Now, you've got to have, as you say, 150,000 bucks to even get... A real $225. takes about 20 reels of tape. And how do you feel about groups like Motley Crue making millions of dollars? No, no. the music! You. The music! It's people like you. The music! It's people like Jay. It's people who are so totally dominating the talent of this country. People like these people you out here. You think Motley Crue Like these gentlemen. You are, you are telling us, 
and we're going to keep the show going even after you've gone. So good night to you. Roll the credits. We got a lot more stuff to talk about. Go ahead. You love him. You hate him. Now you can see him live. Morton Downey Jr. live at the Syria Mosque, Friday, September 30th. Brought to you by WPTT-TV 22.